Naturally, government leaders, healthcare workers, and the general community should do everything in their power to reduce the spread of COVID-19. This has been the situation globally, as spirited efforts have been made to combat the virus. But these efforts, on the other hand, have largely created a neglect of the public health challenges that already existed before the outbreak of the coronavirus. And now, Dr. Fola Jimmy Adebowale, public health practitioner, joins us to help us get an understanding of the level of neglect. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Before the COVID-19, Nigeria had been battling with several diseases and healthcare situations in the form of endemic malaria and inadequate healthcare services. How is the situation of all these other healthcare challenges with the prevailing COVID-19 situation? Okay, um, with the current situation of things, it seems it's getting worse. Uh, before now, we've had challenges with overcrowded hospital and doctors working on hours. But right now, the first thing is that people are actually avoiding hospitals. There have been cases of um, hospital acquired infection because the hospital is a place where you can't get infected. So for very good reason, people are actually avoiding it unless it's an emergency unless it's something that you cannot do without. The other part is that people that travel out for healthcare purposes actually can't do so at the moment, unless those who are um, on life support or can afford air ambulance, stuff like that. But for majority of people, hospital work, hospital activity has reduced. What can the government do in this regard? Well, at the moment, there's nothing much the government can do, but beyond now, there's a lot they can do. We're all aware that a lot of clinics are no longer open. Just yesterday, I tried getting in touch with a neurosurgeon in Abuja, and he told me I had to close down the clinic. Now, if anybody needs surgery urgently, the person might not be able to get it. However, beyond now, they should be able to um, walk through our facilities in such a way that we can actually do better. Right now in Europe and in the US, they are complaining about hospitals being overcrowded. Over here, we've always known our general hospitals and our teaching hospitals to be overcrowded. It was a norm that we had before. All those things have had to change. Hospital needs to stop being overcrowded. Hospitals need to be able to standardize their practice to international standards. These are things that must come into the discussion once this pandemic is over. Uh, what, what can healthcare workers do um, in spite of all of this to ease the challenges for those who have other health challenges? Well, there's been a lot of innovations in this regard. Telemedicine has really come out to the fore. People are actually talking to their doctors via technology. At the same time, some hospitals have actually told patients that if you want to come to the hospital, please book an appointment before coming, and they'll tell you the best time to come so that you just don't walk in and touch anything and get you no know, infected and issues like that. The healthcare workers have a major role to play, especially in terms of explaining to their patients. But apart from that, they need to still work empathically, even though they are the forefront and they, are, they stand a very big risk of being infected. That doesn't mean they should walk with, or you should deal with patient with disdain, or totally ignore your patient in the name of you trying not to get infected. Despite the situation, you still have a job to do. All right, w what will you advise people with uh, chronic medical um, conditions or pregnant women for that matter, who have to visit the hospital during this period? Hospital visits at the moment are situations where it's absolutely necessary for you to go. Thank God before now, we, we've always told patients, especially people with chronic diseases like hypertension and diabetes, that they have a role to play in this matter. They need to have the right knowledge and they need to have the right attitude and be very proactive about their care. That still remains. Beyond that, they need to be in touch with their doctor. And if it's absolutely necessary, they need to go to the hospital. But for now, they need to be very proactive about their care. 
and be very on point about it. In case the COVID-19 issue doesn't go away anytime soon, what will happen to government hospitals, as you say, that are usually overcrowded? Um, will that not pose even more serious danger? Yes, like I said earlier, it's a big problem. But if they innovate, they can actually solve it. For example, it's possible for you to call book an appointment and be in the hospital when you need to have the appointment. You don't need to be like before like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you have an 11.15 a.m. appointment, you go there at 11.15 a.m. and you leave the place. So such a structured pattern can actually reduce the amount of people. Then being able to attend to uh, your nearby primary health care center will actually reduce the need for you to go to a general hospital. So if they can innovate and we can balance issues, improve our primary health care system, there will not be a crowd at the general, which is the secondary level or at the tertiary level. All right, thank you very much, Doctor, for your time with us on the news and your insight. You're welcome.